YouTube. This is your boy, Mr. B from Backyard Barbecue. Read it. Sit down and learn from the master. Anyway, uh, it's Memorial Day weekend, and uh, first I'd like to say uh, uh, I hope you guys have a wonderful weekend. Um, enjoy your day off on Monday as well. Um, so I decided to come up with some tips that would be a helpful tips for some of you anyway, some of you just massive grills like me, but anyway, I'm gonna give you 10 tips today that uh, maybe should help you in the future. It might help you in the future. Um, I'm gonna go get my MacBook, we're gonna come back, and uh, I wrote them down uh, uh, you know, in a document so I can go over and make sure I don't miss nothing. Uh, then we're gonna go through this. So sit tight, I'll be right back, and we're gonna do this, y'all, all right? All right, we're back, y'all. Got my handy MacBook right here, my computer. Um, 10 tips. Let's go ahead and get this started so we can get you on the way to making wonderful barbecue this uh, Memorial Day weekend, all right? Number one, never brush your grates. Hmm, if you don't ever clean your grates off, it's a difference between seasoning your grill and not cleaning your grill grates. Always, always clean your grill grates. One. What I use is this right here, or one of, this is one of many of them I have around here. This is the first one I grab um, to screw up my grill. Some people clean their grill grates um, immediately following a cook. I don't necessarily recommend that because a lot of times your grill, if you're smoking meat, it's not up to temp so that you can actually uh, clean it off. And if you're smoking meat, chances are your, your grill is between maybe 225, 250. Um, which means now you gotta raise the temp up to actually clean it properly and, and kill all the bacteria and, and, and excess food that's just sitting on your grill. Which means you're gonna waste some coal or waste some uh, wood or waste some uh, lump coal. So I recommend cleaning your grates at the beginning of your cook when your fire is extremely hot and you're waiting for your coals to ash over. What I mean by that is your charcoal turn from black to a grayish looking color. Same thing with lump coal. Um, and then go from there. Get your clean on and then I'll come behind it. This is all me talking, right? My, just my recommendations. I come behind it and I use a, a canola oil spray can or either use uh, some type of oil to grease the, uh, on a napkin, you know, fold it up um, and just rub it down, rub the grill grates down to keep them uh, seasoned or, or um, so the meat doesn't stick to it. And after that, if you got meat sticking to your grill, then chances are you probably haven't learned your grill yet and it's getting too hot on you. Anyway. All right, step two, tip two. Let's see. All right, a lot of people um, don't give their grill grates time to heat up. And what I mean by that is, a lot of times when you light your fire, you, you take your grill grates off, you pour your charcoal in your Weber, or your, uh, your, your, your char broiler, or whatever you have, and it comes up to temp, you're ready to cook, you take your grill grates, you put it on, you run in the house, grab the meat, put it on the grill. Problem with that is you want your grill grates to come up to the same tip as your charcoal. Um, reason being, like I said, old bacteria still, you know, sitting on your uh, your grill grates. If you hadn't cleaned it off thoroughly by using heat or taking it in the house or using a water hose outside to scrub it down, however you clean it, um, applying that heat to it does wonders, man. To make sure that you don't have remnants of old cooks on your meat. All right. Uh, tip number three. Lighter fluid, all right, here's a good one. If you're using lighter fluid, throw it away. Better yet, give it to somebody else who don't know what they're doing. So here's what I do. Show you this real quick. It's called a chimney. One of these. I've been using this thing for the last maybe six years, and you see it still, granted I keep it in my garage in a crate, milk crate, but uh, still works wonders. Let me show you how this works, right? Like I said, get rid of your uh, lighter fluid, to show you something new you see the inside of this this part right here is a little metal metal thing that holds your charcoal or your lump coal you pour your charcoal in here notice the holes right I'm talk about that in a minute and you see the bottom you take paper and you stick it in the bottom light it with a lighter set it on the or uh, whatever you sit it on I just sit it on top of my grill or uh, the grill grates until it's good and hot then I pull my, my coals in because I got one of the grill grates that flips up but whatever works for you light it and then go from there no more charcoal no more charcoal i mean uh lighter fluid taste on there trust me 
the fans, fa friends, family, they will notice the difference immediately. Immediately. Um, here's what I use to light mine. I've been using this tank for a little over two years now. Same setup. Come, I think I paid $24 at Lowe's. Um, this part screws off. I'll show you this real quick. Comes off. Comes in a package just like this. You just take it and screw it on. Easy day. And it has a knob in the back. Not saying you got to get this one because uh, I ain't selling any product, but I just twist it. I hear gas. Got fire. And what I do, remember I was talking about them holes in the chimney? chimney? I, I, I probably, you know, put the flame to each one of these holes, maybe one on each side, the side, the right side, the middle, and on the left side. About five seconds each, turn it off. I'm done. Till the next time. So that is how I'm able to use the same setup for about two, two, two over two years. Um, I recently just bought a new uh, refillable, not refillable, but a uh, uh, replacement um, propane tank, the little blue ones. I uh, still hadn't used it yet, so it's just sitting in there waiting until uh, the rest of the propane is gone. That's how you get rid of your lighter fluid, y'all. Save you some money in the long run. Oh, a lot of times, uh, oh, when I do that, I don't stick paper up under the bottom either. No need for paper, no need to save the newspaper. I used to do that too. Um, or you can buy the cubes. They got cubes that come 24 in a pack um, at Home Depot and Lowe's. Um, made by Weber, I believe. But some, I believe some other companies, you know, started to make them. The little knockoff version. They all do the same thing. Um, you just stick it in there, light it, and then wait about 15 minutes and you got a fire shooting up. And then you pour it in the grill. Comes with these handles. Keep you from getting burned as you pour it in. Safety first, y'all. All right. Let's talk about uh, two-zone cooking. Two-zone cooking is what we, as master barbecuers, or people that think we know what we're doing, include myself, um, as indirect cooking. What I mean by that is putting your fuel source or your heat source on one side and cooking your meat on the other side of your grill. All right? Um, you can Google that, YouTube it. I think I got some videos on there about how to do indirect cooking. Um, it's wonderful to keep you from burning your meat so fast. So, uh, doing that, like I said, allows you to manage your temps. And especially if you're doing uh, um, Boston Butts, longer cooks, works wonders um, works wonders on burgers. That way you got to burn them soon. Or you're standing there every two seconds flipping them over. Um, you'll be there forever with that. So, give it a try, man. Let me know what you think. Comment below. All right. Let's see here. Tip number five, a lot of people misconstrue lump charcoal with uh, regular briquettes and when to use them. My own personal preference, um, I recently just started using lump uh, coal and I'm gonna be honest with you, I'm thoroughly impressed. However, I do have a Kamado. Well, let me give you a lineup, right? So I got Big Bertha, my Big Shirley Fab, which is a 24 by 60 pull behind trailer. I have a Weber Kettle Grill, I have a Weber Smoking Mountain Weber, I have a Kamado Grill, which is like the big green egg, and then I have the uh, the Tailgater, which is your cheap $40, $50 grill that you take tailgate. So that's my lineup that I have currently. Um, I've been through every single grill, probably, that Home Depot and Lowe's sales, so I can, you got a question, I can probably answer it. But anyway, um, in reference to that, and the reason why I was telling you the list of those grills is some grills prefer I prefer to use lump coal in like my Kamado and then my Weber I prefer to use briskets uh, briquettes in the reason being is one they recommend for the Kamados or the big green eggs that you use lump coal lump coal gets hotter faster and it, it works wonders for like cooking steaks and stuff however anything that gets hot quick gets cool quick too if you know what I mean by that that means my lump coal will burn out quicker if I let it go up to 700, 800, even 1,000 degrees. Make sense? Hope so. Um, so for longer cooks, if you're not using a Kamado, or if you're thoroughly skilled at how to maintain a fire, you can get long cooks out of lump coal. Um, but I prefer brisket, briquettes when it comes to my Weber, uh, my Smoky Mountain Weber, uh, my, my uh, kettle grill. And even the uh, my tailgater, I prefer just to use briquettes on that um, for that reason. But when it comes to hands down ceramic grills, lump coal is the way to go. 
All right. Next tip, number six. You refuse to invest in a digital grill. I used to be this way for the longest. I said, you know what? I've been cooking since I was six. Um, I can eyeball it. When I see clear grease on chicken, I know it's done. If I can grab that 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 bone out of the Boston butt or the uh, pork shoulder, I know it's done. Eh. -eh. Let me regroup and tell you this right here. Um, this right here, Thermopin. You don't necessarily get this one. There's a million of them on the market. You know what this thing does for me? If I'm cooking chicken, because I cook for the public now, um, you know, charities, whatever, fundraisers, whatever, making money to keep shooting these videos, buying product, whatever it is, um, I want to make sure that I'm giving them safe food, especially when you're dealing with chicken. Right? That chicken ain't 165 degrees, it ain't coming out the grill. I don't care how long they waiting for it. I don't care if they asking for it, just not doing it because I want the chicken to be safe for consumption. Um, salmonella poisoning is something serious and if you ever had it, you know what I mean by that. So, invest in one of these or something similar to this. I ain't one of their marketers, so invest in something similar to the Thermopen. You can Google that, uh, Thermopen, and then it'll show you or Google a uh, digital pro thermometer. And they'll come up with a laundry list of ones that uh, you can buy. And they all pretty much do the same thing. It's just about how long you have to keep the probe in the meat. Like this one, instantaneously. Uh, this is what they use on the competition circuit to verify that your meat is over 140 degrees. But some of the other ones maybe take you three seconds to come up with an accurate reading on your particular meat. Um, and do yourself a favor. Look up the chart. There's a million charts out there that tell you the different degrees. Like I said, chicken, 165 degrees. Uh, when I'm doing Boston butts, I even go anywhere from 195 to 205. Sometimes 205 just to make sure that when I pull the bone, it's good to go and I don't have to put it back on there. All right? But just my own personal preference. All right. Let's see here. Tip number seven. Spreading the charcoal too soon. All right. With that one, once you get your charcoal, we're just talking about briquettes, right? Once you get your uh, charcoal lit, pour to your grill. It's sitting there. And, uh... You say, oh, it's ready, because I can feel the fire, it's hot. Nope. You wait until it ashes over, wait till the charcoal starts to turn gray, a majority of them, unless you're doing the minion method, um, which is you light the charcoal from the center, and then it spreads out. That's the way it's designed. So you don't have to worry about all your charcoal being gray. But if you've lit all your charcoal and you expect them to be used, to be cooked at that particular time, then you wait for them all to ash over. Um, then you put your lid on, and go from there. All right. Uh, tip number eight. Let's talk about vents on grills for a second, right? This is a key one here because a lot of people don't have not mastered a grill because of how the airflow works um, in maintaining the fire. Obviously, you need oxygen in order for a fire to be maintained. So, using those vents, um, particularly the ones like if you're using my Smoky Mountain Weber, the vents at the bottom. I only use two of them, and that's just because over, over time I've learned my particular grill. So if I was cooking at your house and you had one, I would start off with all three just because I don't know your grill. Everybody cooks differently. Everybody's grill cooks differently. So you just can't say, oh, I'm a master chef, and I just come over there and use your grill, and all of a sudden I'm perfect. Because if you don't know how fast that cooks or slow, you'll mess up some food, right? So that's definitely a tip. Don't just think you can just have somebody come over and get on your grill and cook and then it comes out perfectly. Sometimes we lucky enough to do that just because we have the skills to be versatile. But a lot of times you have to babysit that grill, sit there and make sure your temps don't run out of control. All right. Uh, number nine, let's talk about chicken real quick. Um, a lot of people don't keep their chicken moist while they're cooking it and it uh, ends up being dry. So if you're one of those guys that is known for cooking dry chicken, this is for you. Here's how you do that. You marinate your chicken, sit it overnight so that the protein in the chicken, which is why it's one of the best sources of meat for uh, bodybuilders and stuff like that, or people that are uh, trying to stay lean because it has a lot of protein in it. So, and what that means is a lot of fibers in there. So when you inject that meat or you just sit it in a solution, uh, salt water, um, whatever you mix it with, and it soaks in, once you put it on the grill, before that chicken becomes dry, even turkey, before it becomes dry, all the moisture in the meat has to come out. So if you plan it right, for the for those that don't know how to, to manage fires and, and cooking chicken the proper way without drying out, 
hopefully your temperature of your grill allows you to finish cooking before the moisture in the meat evaporates and then it starts to turn dry. Um, another method is using what I use right here, my flow master that I got from Home Depot, my spray bottle is moist, keeping the meat moist and sprayed. I do it because I know how to measure my tips. I usually uh, spray my meat, uh, especially Boston butts, uh, stuff like that. But uh, chicken, about once every 45 minutes to an hour just to keep the outside moist. So, because heat dries stuff out, you keep it moist, you'll be good to go. And my last tip for you guys so you can uh, go out there and do some good barbecue on Memorial Day weekend is a lot of people apply barbecue sauce too early. Me, I'm one of those ones that I prefer to put the barbecue sauce to the side because I feel like my skills at cooking the meat um, and you tasting it, I don't need to cover it up with barbecue sauce. So I believe in putting it to the side and you saying, okay, the meat's good, I don't need sauce, or I need sauce because the meat doesn't taste how I want it to taste, right? That takes a lot of skills to be able to do that. A lot of people put barbecue sauce on there because they are scared that other people will may, maybe not like their particular seasoning that they use. So I've done that too, hot sauce as well. But anyway, the key here is to put barbecue sauce on your meat five minutes to 15 minutes after you're about ready to pull it off. So the last 15, five to 15 minutes is when you, you're dousing with your sauce. And remember now, sauce is not gonna soak into the meat. So don't think that if you think you just a master of all things. All it's gonna do is bake into the, uh, the actual meat and provide like a layer of flavor. So you get what I'm saying? Five to 10 minutes before you're ready to pull it, get your mop or just pour it on, however you do it, spoon, everybody does it different ways. Um, cover your meat, put the top back on for about five to 15 minutes and then pull it. Let your meat sit before you eat. And this is key too. And I'm gonna let you guys go. Cover your meat, let it sit because as soon as you pull the meat off, it still cooks for the next you know, uh, up to 30 minutes, depending on the size of the meat, uh, especially with briskets and stuff like that, and uh, Boston butts. So let it sit, let the uh, the juices flow back into the meat, and then you'll be good to go, man. People will love you for these. If you just follow these few tips right here, you are well on your way to making awesome barbecue. This is your boy, Mr. B, from Backyard Barbecue, signing off. Hope y'all enjoy your weekend. Uh, happy Memorial Day to all you guys. And let's do it, y'all.